first wanted to say welcome to Toucan. If you haven't been here before, if you have, welcome back. Um, this is a new platform that's built specifically for networking, for social events. It's totally dynamic. So you go where you want to go and you talk to whoever you want to talk to. So I highly encourage you right now um, to hover over somebody's icon or a group's icon um, and click the join button and go and join them. Go and join them in a group. Um, say hi. We're all here for the same reason. We're really passionate about community and learning about how we can improve. Um, and so go meet somebody new and experience this talk with them. All you need to do is click and move. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker. So Mike Silberg is a man that eats, sleeps, breathes community. So he's worked for years um, at various companies such as Red Bull and WeWork in community building roles. And most recently, he founded the ISCL network, which brings together lots of community experts and strategists to help both businesses and kind of more consumer focused communities thrive through individual consulting events and community outsourcing. So please welcome Mike up to the stage. Mike, come up and, and present with me. Everybody give him a round of applause, a two can round of applause. <laughs> That's so amazing. I love your platform. I actually tr just tried it out yesterday and, and I joined because I love the spirit of Antonia. Wow, guys, I'm like, wow, I'm blushing. <laughs> overwhelming the amount of, of, of. That's what it does to you. It's yeah. an endorphin rush. Listen, uh, Antonia, this is like what you did here is, is really, really cool. And I worked with a lot of platforms for many years. And um, so, so thank you, all you guys, um, for for taking part in all the nights. But let's start by providing you guys value. So yeah, so like Antonia said, I think the first time I really harnessed the power of community was about almost 20 years ago in 2002. And I was um, uh, an 18 year old uh, kid um, in uh, um, some kind of um, pre-army training and I'm Israeli from Israel and here everybody goes to the army and I wanted to do the best I can be and there is like a really cool thing that you go and you can train for a year. Not enough you do three years in the army. You do like an army before that for a year and you do it on your own time after school. Like you, you need to be nuts to do it. And when I did it, it's, I really enjoyed it. It was a very empowering experience. And almost by the end of the year, um, I, I knew that we we're going to leave and go to the army. And I asked the guy that's in charge of it, like, why don't we why don't you use us here you know the the, the alums before we go because it's the worst business in the world you know every business has returning customers when you're in a pre-army training you go to the army you're not even around to help and say hey guys you should come here it's not even you know uh, in the vicinity and he said what do you suggest and what i said listen let's create a panel with people like us that already were accepted and did the year and and and, and create some kind of panel around the region in schools to tell the kids that are a year younger about the experience and he said yeah go for it and long story short his um organization grew from 270 to 550 people in one year like every year he start he restarts the organization and they double the organization as an as a high school student and when i finished my army almost four years later he called me and said listen mike what you did was amazing i was waiting for you four years and now that you finished, it was only one center in a, in a place, in, in a city next to Tel Aviv. Now you're going to open 10 branches from one to 10 using the same method you did before. And I did it for six summers. So jumping along, I'm not going to do all my CV. I worked for KPMG in management consulting, and I worked for Red Bull, and, and I opened this, a, a community-based startup. And I never knew that community is a profession. It was always a side just a mindset and um, I was very business entrepreneur oriented, marketing oriented, even though I learned accounting, but actually the mixture of having a very strategic focused um, methodological way of thinking combined with a passion of people helping 
marketing, understanding that psychology is what I think gave me the skill to do what I do today. And somehow with my growing up in companies, Red Bull was a company that, you know, that's what they do. They don't just bring amazing events. They let the people create the event. They let the people become a community. They say, listen, let's yeah. create statues. Let's create vehicles. Let's, you know, they let the people come and create the event. And the event is about, you know, the participants and about participation. But the defining moment for me was when I went for the Israeli meet, uh, Burning Man, Meat Burn, and saw how people created the city together. They paid, if you accumulate all the money and time they put in, much more than going to a week in a five-star hotel to live in a tent in the desert seven days. And, and they worked the whole year for that, and then you burned the city down. And then so the experience of working together and collaborating is what creates the, the amount, the intense experience that's so meaningful for people and stays with them a long time after. Long story short, after um, the event, I left my job like part time. I asked to go and I went to study about communities. And a few, like six months later, I created a huge event, which is the ISCL Summit. And from there, the ICL Network started because we had a huge event, super successful, and we got suddenly a lot of clients out of it. And I was trying to build communities for organizations, and I understood that building community is a really, um, it's not a good solution always. And I hate selling what's not that people because building a community is, is, is an amazing thing, and any organization should plan on building a community. But it takes a while to build a community. We have to make it authentic. You have to have a strong buy-in for the, for the whole of the company. You have to be in the right status to invest a lot in creating the push in the community. You have to have a right market fit to create the, 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 the story around the community. And you can't put your whole basket of eggs uh, um, just on the community making everything work. And also when you're young, you have to grow quickly. And you have to grow more than just a brand growth of a community. So what I started thinking of, what if I would just, you know, tap into communities? And when I started, it was in consulting and I would do lectures. And then I said, instead of teaching people how to be leaders, everybody wants to be a leader. I said, I wish I could teach people how to become good members. Because that's, that's a secret. You should grow as being amazing members in other groups. And then you don't need to do all, all the hard work. If you manage a community, you have to facilitate. And people always have complaints and you have to you know, bring people to events and you have to market them and you have to plan them and you have to produce them and you have to, you know, and take out content that's not relevant. It's a lot of work. What if you could just enjoy the community and be a really good and impactful member? And that's what we started doing for companies and we call it CR, Community Relations. We create situations and just, that's my recommendation and the main topic that we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna answer questions for you guys. It's saying, listen, let's just, and that's how we do it with companies. Because we have a network, so it's much easier for us to do the market research, because we know also about the communities that's not, not easily found. But we create a setup, which is a, a list of 100 communities that would be relevant for the persona that we're looking for. We find those communities, ecosystems, whatever. And then we start um, checking them out and learning them. And many communities have guidelines. And the first thing is when you're a guest somewhere, you have to look at the guidelines because you want to be a really good member. And then once you start understanding that, like you can't do publicity, you can't, you can't uh, sell anything or market or publicity. But usually there are all kinds of, of um, bylaws, like only on Wednesdays you can do something. If it's a, uh, you can do a meetup, you can do something of that. And you can find all kinds of ways that it's not selling, it's just creating value as part of the organization. And in that way, it's not just that you create some kind of, of strong presence, you get empowered also by the community manager. So sometimes you can also give them, you know, if you invite for the event, so you can sponsor the event uh, with food, with beverage, with hosting, with all kinds of things. You can bring great speakers. There's all kinds of things you can do to build the relationships. Also what we do, we monitor those groups for the, for, the, for the customers. We say, listen, let's look where there's great questions coming authentically from the audience about the subjects that are interesting about that. Like if I would work with uh, um, uh, Tukon, there's a community in Israel called Super Tools, which is all about internet tools. And there's almost 36 or 35,000 people, very engaged. 
And, you know, I would monitor that group. And everybody says, hey, do you know any good platform for events? You know, in real time, just answer the question. And when you have authentic answers and not just people pushing, you know, Tukan, 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 which we're trying to do here today. I'm joking. But, you know, but when people ask and then people see it. So when I work with my customers, I say, listen, I can't promise. It's not like PPC. It's not like you'll give me $100 and I'll push it all the time. I have to write for, you know, the right situation. But if you have enough groups, enough presence, enough monitoring, enough things happens, it balances out and creates a, and create quick wins. And as you know, companies who want to show real um, uh, success and performance and create a presence, that's a great thing. And there's a second value about engaging in, in those ecosystems and community. You want to guess what, what it is? Me? Yeah, maybe because you're the only one on stage. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I, but it, making sure that they they are maintaining like high quality communication. I don't know. So it's not our job to for them to maintain high level or or quality communication. But the thing is, you can find your community market fit. You can see in those communities what's happening, and you can see what's missing. And then you can understand with your target audience, which are probably in those groups, and understand what kind of new value you can create in the world. And that's the beauty of how I see community, because communities should be part of your core strategy in many ways. But today, many times, organizations invest in CSR, community and sustainability relations, right? They, they give money to donate for causes. But they do it, you know, with a very, very small portion, and it's not really connected to the core of their being. What if we would find something that would be in the core of our business and find some kind of problem that's a community problem? It's not just a business problem. And help it as part of our strategy. And, you know, people say, oh, are you doing it because you want, you want to get attention or you want to sell something? But in the end, what's bad if you do something good to help people? And instead of just... Just put paying money for Facebook or for paid ads, you know, invest that money in doing good and, and get publicity by really authentically finding problems and solving them. And that's what you need to do. You need to find the places where you can help. You can say where your product can help, give it for free and um, give free consulting. That's what we used to do with, with content marketing. But here it's much larger. It's with scale. I say it's like business development or marketing on steroids because you just help the whole group. You don't help one person one by one by one by creating content that they can read whenever they want. You created an engagement. You create a discussion around it. And that's what you need to do. You need to find a place where you can give value to others in scale where it's the value is not, I say that marketing is fossil fuel. Marketing is you need to put all the time energy or money into it. And then like with a car, you have two liters of gas, you can go 20 Ks. But with, with a community, with a community energy, if you put something and you create some kind of, I call it like a nuclear explosion, the energy continues to go. And you need a, lot, a small amount, it just needs to be accurate. And then you have to create a conversation all the time. And when we build communities, the idea is that in one stage, we don't need to invest anymore in pushing them forward. It comes from the members. We just need to facilitate that it doesn't go overboard and, and out of context. So I was think I'll finish with like the, the blurb about what do we do and how do we do it and how you should do it and just take it to your own and open it for the audience for questions. Well, I have a, I have a quick question actually um, that I was wondering about what, what you just said right there at the end. How do you know when you've gotten your community to a point where it is kind of self-perpetuating? Because my, your, the job is never over, but when, when can, what sort of signals, what sort of KPIs are you working with typically that indicate that you might be able to sort of step back a little or focus so, energy on something else? So it's a great question. The thing is, you we don't really step back ever. You, you never really stop investing because it's, it's like was I said, a nuclear reactor. It's just the amount you need to invest is very small and the amount you need to invest is very smart. So with communities, there's a life cycle of metamorphosis that, that, or mimosa that it dies in some stage or it becomes, you know, um, too shallow. So 
I have a whole lecture about what we call and we invented the five community peaks, but the fifth one is actually layers. Once a community is very strong and very active on the same topics, you need to help it break it down into sub-communities. If you think about Facebook as, as, a, as a huge cosmos meta of that, you know, Facebook was all about connecting, creating this huge community. By the way, that's the slogan. That, uh, when you go into LinkedIn and sign in, it's like the community of professionals. LinkedIn sees the whole people of the network of, of LinkedIn as a huge community of professionals. But what groups does, what, what uh, Facebook did in 2017, it's changing their mission and the same groups, they understood that they can't have a community of 2.2 billion people, today 3 billion. They have to start breaking it down and creating layers. You have to create more um, dense and complex and multi-layered uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. So the thing is when you feel that already the, 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 the engagement around one subject is so strong, you should create like a, uh, a new layer because it's an opportunity. Why? Because the more layers you have, you become a stronger community or a more, or a more likely to be the go-to community. Because if I'm a community of, of professionals around super tools, and all we do is talk about super tools, I only come when I need the tool and I leave. I don't live in the community. It's just a community for content. But if you continue and you build more layers and you create events and you create um, like um, fathers, you know, that are geeks, uh, and then you create like a, a chirps for, for the community, it becomes a place, you know, finding jobs in SaaS companies, I don't know what. You know, then you become more go to community and you, you become the place where people fulfill their needs. And that's the idea of the community. Companies used to have a very narrow relationship with the customer. Like, this is what you need. We're a corporate, we'll provide it to you. And that's what happened. We, we broke our communal uh, fabric that was until 150, 200 years ago before the Industrial Revolution. And we used to get everything from the community. Everything was usually community grown, locally grown. You know, suddenly the corporates, you, don't, you didn't need the community, you could buy everything. And then we had the digital revolution that we didn't even need to meet anybody. We could just call pizza home and we could just, you know, order stuff. But because for so many decades, sorry, centuries, millennia, you know, community was the way for survival. Once it was taken for us, we feel the emptiness without community. So when you provide community, you provide a holistic thing which people are desperately, desperately in need for. So the thing is you need, first of all, and that's what the peaks, when I talk about them, the first one is actually shared identity. When you're ready and you feel the shared identity is very strong, you can go slowly through the peaks. But that's like a whole different um, uh, lecture about how to build the different peaks. But there's always some kind of work in order to create the next level and the more deeper and and once you get to layers, every layer becomes a new community that you need to work on the peaks again and again. But the more you do it, you have followers. And there's a great video I show in my lectures about, you probably saw how to create the movement, that the main point there is the people don't imitate the leaders, they imitate the followers. And once you build a community and you have the people following you right, and you facilitate them and showing them how to behave, people will imitate them. And that's your main job not to be the, the, the example or leader that's like, oh, everybody look at Mike. No, to slowly cultivate those small first round, I call them core circle power members and empower them to lead the community with you. It's that's a really interesting point. To ecosystem, by the way, because from the move from the ecosystem, Mike, I need to be seen to ecosystem, I'm empowering others for them to empower others and creating more ripples. Yeah, no, that's a that's a really interesting concept. Um, jumping to to kind of the topic of of today's talk, I'm curious just to start mm -hmm. off with using kind of other communities to boost your own. How do you approach a community that you might not be a part of, but that you think may have synergies with your own? Great question. So there's a few things. First of all, usually most of the communities we can be part of because they're a target audience and we want to work with them and, and you know we're part of it. You know, for super tools, there, there's no reason why Antonia can't be part of super tools, right? It's just a community of talking about tools. But many times, like I had clients that wanted the community of like uh, you know, elderly people. 
So if it's a big market for them, it's so important for them, I usually hire somebody that's, you know, a potential community member, somebody that's in that age group and, you know, and, and train him and, and, you know, teach him how to work with those communities. It wouldn't be for one community. It would be if we work with like 10 communities like that. It's like when you do business development. When you hire somebody for business development, you don't usually hire just somebody who knows business. You want somebody from the industry, right? Most of the biggest uh, business development professionals are people that used to be technical people before. They used to be in development. They, they know the product. And because they know the product so well, and they have some kind of business orientation, together, that's a perfect mix to build relationships with our potential clients, long-term relationships. And you don't bring people for business, you don't bring people for business development for, let's say, a computer company that came from from fashion, right? Same thing was was community relations. You don't you don't bring people to do community relations um, for women group if it's a six seventy year old male. So so you need also when you hire the community manager, community leader, community facilitator, community business developer, you know, to be somebody that can relate and can connect to those people. And by the way, that's what I love about my job. The world I see, people will have to do what they love and where they feel part of. They can't fake it anymore. Yeah, fascinating. Um, I'm going to pass the next question on to Electra, who sent a question in the chat. And by the way, if anybody in the audience here has any questions, drop it in the chat. It's in the bottom right corner. And then we'll call you up and you can, you can ask Mike a question. But Electra, if you want to come up. Uh, I think you're you muted, perhaps. Yes, I was muted. Hi, first, thanks for coming. It's been really interesting so far. Um, so my main question was, if you're trying to kind of create this partnership and these kind of bonds with other ecosystems, what's the best way of kind of keeping these relationships and making your community members aware? Is it good to do something like joint events or kind of like speaker events with the community leaders, kind of any suggestions? So a relationship is a relationship. Imagine, you know, I would hit a little, okay? And I would come very strong. It, it, it would be very intimidating. You know, in the beginning, I would try maybe to find information about you or see like, what, what are you doing right now? Like, or if you eat, like, I, I would try to create like networking, some kind of, of, of topic for conversation things that are relevant. And the beginning, you know, again, let's take a relationship of, of, of a boy and a girl, you know, if instead of, of hitting on, you know, moving around the room, creating the eye contact, creating the, everything that's around it, but how do I do it? By creating some kind of presence, like commenting some places, writing answers, not straight on saying, hey, I'm Mike, I'm here, look at me, you know, like usually like, okay, this guy doesn't have any security, he really needs to be seen. It's a real turn off for everybody, not just for everybody. So the idea is to be cool, just to be cool, to create value for others. And people say, wow, he's like really cool. And then slowly you, you build the trust. So yes, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a long game. It's a long, long game. And, and you can do sometimes facilitation, and you can do sometimes uh, uh, talks or, or live sessions. Again, you have to be always through the, the, the prisma of, of how do I create value for others. That's it. How do I create value for others and how am I cool about it? Not too excited, not too pushy. And I really recommend the book Permission Marketing by Seth Gooden. It talks about it a lot. And that's what we're doing in community. It's permission marketing. We're stopping pushing. We're doing what's relevant for the relevant people. And that's it. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I know there's a couple other questions so I'm going to up off stage um there is a follow-up question from juiced i don't know if i'm saying your name right but if you want to come up and ask your question then we'd love to love to hear it from you if you want to present you're talking to me or no no no, no. there's a, a attendee okay yeah but I can I can ask the question as well. Um, so the question. Oh, I think I figured it out. Did yes, I? Yes, you figured it out. It out. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Good. Um, Great to see you. So, Welcome to the stage. Th thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, so Electra's question uh, prompted, I thought, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily like core in that business uh, at the moment, but I used to be involved with building and, and uh, helping companies figure out how to do alliance networks uh, successfully. And I'm wondering if there's a, sort of a synergy or a leverage between what you're trying to do with your alliance companies and establishing a, a community um, to, to further those goals, to, to bring people in, to see the synergy between the companies and, and how you know they can make use of that. Any comments? Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, when you talk about 100 years ago, companies had two positions, production and sales. So it was very simple. You had a few people in management and you had the factory. Things would go out of the factory and there would people to go in sales. Slowly, people were becoming, were seeing that were really smart people selling better than others. Like, in the, did you see the, the Wolf of Wall Street? That he does the phone call and everybody's looking at him and he, and and that's the marketing guy because he says okay this is the pitch you're gonna say he teaches all the salespeople this is our product this is the story this is what you do and everybody imitates it so there were salespeople that were really smart and thought about the strategy and about the brand and about the story and said okay you teach everybody else and you give the strategy to everybody else and suddenly when they stood, there's customer success usually it used to be the sales people like you would say listen I brought something from you and suddenly we said okay we need customer success. You want to try to say we have so many positions in companies, program manager, partnership manager, alliance manager, community manager. Um, so, so it's very much the same. It's just, you know, in different orientation. And I think also that community isn't always the answer. And I said that before. You should think many mm -hmm. times, because I bet they say like Fight Club, you know, the first rule about community, you don't talk about community. Because it sounds like, okay, everybody's throwing that word and it's just, oh, we're a community. Try not try to think about value creation. Try to think about you know partnerships. Try to think about alliances. And when you talk about that, you know that's what people understand. And and the community should mm -hmm. be you know the essence of what you're doing, not the title. So the title doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. What's important is the essence of what you're doing. And the essence of what you're doing in the alliance is supposed to be syn synergetical. Because if what we're doing is not one plus one doesn't create three, there's no reason to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll get off the stage. That's a really interesting answer uh, to that question. I like the part about not putting community in people's faces because I feel like that does sort of make you feel like you're being sold to or that you've bought into something that maybe you wouldn't on paper sign up for, even though you are a member of the community. So I think that's a really interesting point. A question from uh, Paul in the chat, he's wondering, how do you know when it's the right time to hand community leadership to someone else? So that's why you use community pros usually, because it's it's intuition, it's like, you know, it's everything we do. It's, it's, it's a matter of experience. Of course, I can give a few pointers. And one of the things is, is you want to see that um, the people are um, self-motivated. That's, I think, the biggest thing that you need to see. When I hire people, I try to create, we build a, a way of something we call the circle of trust. That's why we're so invested in, in groups and communities, because that's my hiring funnel. I don't want to hire people that come for an interview that want to do for the job, and, and they're telling me a story that I want to hear. Like, I think that game is old fashioned. and and. We talk about other leadership, how do I bring people inside is when I see people that they're self-motivated, that they're really connected, that they have an interest. So you can see it in two ways. You can see it in actions, but you usually see that it's really connected to a reality, that to, to what he really needs. So you can also understand it from the, al the aligned interest that you have. And also you can see it by his actions. So it needs to be both because if their actions doesn't make sense, you should be, you know, why are they doing it? Why are they so maybe, you know, maybe they try, they're just trying to look like, listen, give me the leadership or I want to be part of They're just trying really hard or too hard. And, but it's not part of the real interest or the interest is like maybe taking over the community or, or pushing to their side. So you have to see that it's also um, their actions, but their actions are connected to their authentic needs, self actions uh, and needs. And that's it. 
Thank you. Next question coming from Lucas. Lucas asked, do you recommend a specific program to be a better community builder? Um, platforms, tools to get better at that role? It's, you know, it's, it's like, there's no one size fits them all and there's no, you know, no playbook exactly for what fits. I can say, if you ask me about platforms, usually the biggest rule I use when I consult and work with companies, I try to understand when I do the initial, what they call strategic analysis, which is the first part of before we build the community, is understand where people are, where they're most likely to be. It doesn't matter the features, it doesn't matter how good it is, it doesn't matter if it's the cheapest or most expensive, that's usually all, you know, the most not important. The most important thing are people used to it. Is it easy to use? It's easy for them to use and they're part of it. And that's it. Most of us are just, you know, suckers for having an easy time. And that's it. There's like a model called the fog that talks about triggers and triggers that work. So it's about, and the AX here is about the, the ability to do it, how easy it is to do it and the motivation. So when you work with community and um, with employer or, or employee communities, because they have the motivation of more or less they have to do something. So you can bring a new tool that nobody knows and say, okay, guys, even though you're Mac people, you have to use Microsoft Teams and you have to use this platform. So it, 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 they maybe don't have um, the, the, the ability, it's not easy for them, but they have to. So, but when they work, Community, which is bigger, but the people need to have willingly come in you need to go where, where they already are. And so, usually, you start with social networks that are very in use and try to bring tools like on that's very easy to connect and not too hard and doesn't have uh, all kinds of things you have to go through. And uh, and that's it. So it's all about easy. It need to be easy uh, and and uh, something that people already know or familiar with. Can you tell us about a time when you were leveraging another kind of community to help your own and, and what kind of challenges you faced specifically and how you overcame them? So some communities are, are like very um, fanatic about not pushing a brand or not talking, not being some kind of salesman. They're very allergic to it. And I totally understand and respect that. The solution is it's just not the community to work with. It's okay. That's the beauty. There is about a hundred million communities on Facebook, groups on Facebook. It's good. It's okay. There's other places. Find a place that where it's relevant, you know. And maybe uh, if you just answer questions in a very objective way, because you see it's a, it's a community that's very engaged and very strong trust between the members, it's worthwhile saying, okay, I'm playing the long game. And here I'm just saying answers and I'm just investing here with, with, with answers without anything that's in any way remotely salesy. Um, so that's one of the biggest, you know, because you want in the end, you have an interest and, and, and you know, if you show that, uh, especially in the beginning, it, you know, it's, 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 we have in the second peak of community, we call it trust and there's a, there's a formula for trust, there's a function and it's the biggest thing that ruins trust is what we call self-orientation when you're pushing yourself. So that's the big thing that you need to be very, very careful of your self-orientation, especially in the beginning before you sustain trust. Got it. And um, last question before you head out, quick one, just to give you a little bit of credit. What do you think that the most overlooked or underappreciated aspect of community building is kind of among community professionals? So I think the amount of energy and emotional intelligence and, 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 um, you need in order to work with with the the members it's that's the hardest thing you know understanding you know that small thing the small frictions that you manage to just like an aikido a martial art that you know take their energy and take it against them and you know and and instead of you know fighting back and creating you know oh he said that's what i do most of the time when i coach i coach a lot of, of other community managers that's my passion to help them um so, you know, to try and break it down and take over the ego and, you know, accept the vulnerability. And, and you know, in the end, we have to have like a very uh, thick skin. And, and many times management don't have empathy for that. They're like, we want results. And like, mm -hmm. they don't understand the need for, for the relationship, not for like closing deals. 
And if they want to have the value of community long term, that closing the best deals, even though sometimes when it's not the logic stuff, which you know that's what in the end most businesses are closed not on a rational um, decision, but on a very emotional decision. 95 by the way 95 percent of human decisions are based according to a very in-depth research that won a nobel prize um, about what's called system one and system two and mm -hmm. um, so that's how we make decisions so people say oh we want to see results and we they look at the rational thing of it but it's all about the emotional it's very hard also to convey because it's so you know it happens here small you can't see it you can't see it between the lines it's hard to convey what you did exactly when you built relationships with people and you have to have trust not only with your members you have to have trust also from your management that's a spectacular answer and a great way to end and mike thank you so much for being here everybody please toss all of the claps okay. and all it's of like, it's, in his it's, it's, it's really like beautiful <laughs> We, okay. Yeah, on Tukin, we get, the, we get the army. Everybody everybody sends all the love. Uh, but thank you so much for taking the time to, to chat with us today. This was fascinating. And um, it was also being live streamed on LinkedIn Live. So there are people here who appreciate your wisdom um, who couldn't be here in person. But thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who came. It's great thank to see you. Thank you, everybody. Very good luck, Antonia. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yes. Bye.